So good morning, people. I um, my name is Roman Pinyaev, and I would like to uh, to talk about to present some ideas how to make uh, a poll uh, of polling the descriptors from from user space a bit faster. So. Um, what uh, what what motivated me? The, the first, of course, is just uh, to uh, the fun, just to make it uh, at least to check uh, will it be faster or not, just to use the shared buffer, uh, which we can uh, use uh, from user space directly. And uh, the other motivation is um, all this uh, high performance trend, uh, these high performance applications which use uh, the memory directly and do not talk to the any hardware, and just. Um, um uh, use the memory and uh, avoid uh, the transition to the kernel and avoid uh, any logs uh, and uh, all, all these uh, uh, problems which can uh, lead to, to the performance degradation. So uh, I would like to expose some idea how to, to avoid the transition costs and to avoid any kernel logs uh, when we do uh, the polling, when we are picking up uh, the events uh, from, from the file descriptor. And of course, it, ma it makes uh, sense when, when you have uh, thousands of uh, uh, fi file descriptors uh, and a very tight event loop uh, of doing something. Uh, so wh why, why EPOL? Uh, why not, uh, for example, just the old school uh, select or just using the poll? Because EPOL uh, provides, uh, so it was designed, I think decades uh, ago to, to provide you uh, the subscription semantics, the semantics which uh, let you just uh, once register your, f your file descriptor inside and then collect all the events. And uh, neither select uh, nor poll uh, uh, provide you that. So you, you just need uh, to request each time um, the, e the new events uh, uh, when, you, when you handle the, pr the previous uh, bitmaps of the, of the events. And of course, uh, what, what's nice uh, with EPOL that it's already uh, has everything. So internals uh, just um, easily um, bendable uh, to 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 make uh, the uh, this just easy support of the, of the shared buffer. So when you uh, easily can expose uh, the shared buffer from uh, from the kernel to to user space. Uh, before starting doing something new, of course, uh, it's nice to answer the question: Is that uh, is there something uh, something similar? So recently was, uh, by Christoph Helwig, was added um, the comment uh, to, the, uh, to the asynchronous uh, IO layer, uh, which does um, just, so you need to request uh, uh, the, the polling, mm, so you need to request uh, the, the, new, the events, and then get, get the response back, and everything works uh, using the shared buffer of the asynchronous IO layer. And then uh, Jens added that to the IO ring, uh, so simply uh, copied uh, the, the functionality and uh, the both, uh, the both solutions are the same. And what are the problems with them? The problems is that, as I said, that uh, they do not provide uh, you the subscription semantics, so you need a request each time, and that, of course, uh, can be the penalty for, for the performance. And the second problem is, uh, which maybe should be fixed, or maybe, or maybe not, that's uh, on event path inside the kernel, uh, you have uh, uh, the single spin lock, uh, and of course if you have a bunch of uh, file descriptors registered and uh, they simultaneously uh, try to, uh, to, to fire something, then you will contend on that lock. And um, for further, I, I will tell about that, that's, that's, that's a huge, uh, can be a huge problem which I, I want uh, to, to avoid. So what are the requirements of, uh, of, of this uh, feature or implementation? So the requirements are that um, w would be nice uh, to keep the subscription semantics. So once you register the, the file descriptor, you, you all the time uh, till the whole lifetime of, of the file descriptor, you get the events to your ring buffer. And uh, another one is just to keep uh, everything inside the kernel in, in lockless manner. And uh, about this, uh, the, the performance uh, to keep everything locklessly, I, ca I can show them just uh, the, uh, the estimation of, of, uh, uh, of the uh, ev event path uh, inside, inside, uh, inside Paul uh, when uh, you, for example, fire events from 32 threads, so you have the big machine and you have uh, the runtime which can be improved twice if you do that locklessly. So that, that's obvious the, the obviously the bottleneck. So that can be avoided uh, in, in this uh, uh, implementation. So uh, what, what is the approach um, to, 
um, to provide this uh, sh share, uh, shared ring buffer. And uh, the, uh, the, this requirement of, for example, um, the, the first requirement is to keep um, uh, the subscriptions is semantics. Uh, the, the first approach is just simply uh, provide uh, ring buffer, uh, share ring buffer from, from kernel to user space. But uh, the not nice thing here that uh, you uh, will not, uh, so the, the descriptor, uh, the same descriptor can generate a lot of events and when uh, user space comes to harvest uh, to just to pick up all the events, it can observe uh, thousands of events uh, inside the, the ring buffer, and uh, th that's that's not nice. So, uh, would be would be great to have uh, once you register your, for, for for example, one uh, file descriptor, then you will have only one event, and then there should be some other information uh, that uh, user picks up uh, this event from the ring buffer, and then observes the uh, exactly bit mask, uh, bit bit map, bit, bit field of what exactly events happened. And for that needs, it's not only enough to uh, provide you the uh, ring buffer, you need to provide the also shared with this user space some chunk of the memory, uh, which mm, simply uh, keeps, uh, 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 keeps the bitmaps uh, and uh, register f uh, file descriptor. So uh, once you register your uh, file descriptor, you will have, uh, you occupy this slot and then it will be always there. And all the events inside the ring buffer, they will simply point as an index. So you can see uh, here on, uh, the, mm, the, on, the on the on the second square. So that ring buffer contains the items which simply uh, inside they have have the pointers which pointing to uh, to this fixed size array which uh, describes you what exactly uh, ha uh, has happened. And uh, to 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 for example, this is the um, the small chunk of the code. Uh, which expose how you will add uh, the events on the kernel side. So the kernel, uh, before, uh, before uh, saving something to the ring buffer, it first uh, does the atomic operation and uh, simply updates uh, the, uh, the events. And if the kernel sees that, uh, uh, so it just does the uh, compare exchange. And if it sees that uh, the zero was there, so the, uh, the kernel was the first, so that's the first event, then it uh, goes to, uh, to the ring buffer and uh, and uh, so simply uh, inserts the event there. But if it observes that uh, the, that's not zero, so some bit mask, uh, bit 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 map uh, already has some bits, uh, then uh, it's clear that the user space was not fast enough to harvest these events, and then kernel simply avoids the insertion path. Uh, and that's the uh, the opposite uh, side. That's the 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 user user side, which do does uh, harvesting the events in in reverse. So first, it uh, traverses uh, on on the on the second line. It uh, this is the loop, which uh, uh, we go from the head to tail. And uh, w what's important here is the uh, the sixth line, uh, the where we simply mm, atomically exchange the bit uh, bit mask uh, bit map uh, from uh, from something, some bits which we see there to zero. And if we race here with the kernel, uh, nothing will happen, so kernel will uh, also, uh, so either it will, uh, will see that bit, bit, uh, bits uh, contain something, either it will uh, observe zero if the user space was faster and then will go and add another event uh, to, to the ring buffer. So that's uh, with with this chunk, uh, two chunks of the code of the user space side and kernel side. We solve the, the first requirement. We uh, uh, provide the subscription semantics and do not overflow the ring buffer with many many sequ se sequential events of the single uh, file descriptor. So what uh, what's next? The next is uh, how we will insert um, the mm, the the new items to, to the ring buffer. And so this is the uh, in, in lockless manner. Uh, that's 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 important. Uh, that's um, this is the um, chunk which uh, uh, does uh, the simple insertion, and of course it's racy. And uh, if uh, we do not cover it with the locks, uh, then we will uh, simply uh, the user space will ab observe garbage, and that will won't work. Uh, this one chunk also three lines. Uh, it a, a bit better, so we introduce. Uh, Two atomics, uh, everything is nice. Uh, so we uh, have the shadow tail, which is um, which is not exposed to the user side. Uh, we 
we increase it atomically, and then we uh, write, uh, so on the second line, we uh, put the uh, item uh, to, to, to the, to the uh, user ring, and then we uh, simply uh, exchange atomically also the tail, which is observed by, uh, by, the, by, uh, by the user space. Uh, what's not nice here, the, 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 the shallow problem which exists is that um, if two CPUs enter the same critical, s uh, not, not the, to the, the same chunk of the code, and uh, let's say both of them pass the, uh, the number line, the, the line which is the, the first one line, but uh, one of the CPUs, let's say the, 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 f the first one, uh, it uh, doesn't reach uh, the second line and uh, took the interrupt. So, uh, so it was, now it's doing something else. The second CPU uh, continue, uh, continues execution and uh, reaches the third line, everything's fine. Then it commits the tail. Uh, and uh, in this, com com this procedure of the committing the tail, it will put the number of two, so it will commit itself and will commit the neighbor, which is, uh, so the, 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 the neighbor is the CPU which comes uh, uh, before, or let's say they, they, they come simultaneously. So what observe the user space? The, the user space observes uh, the tail, which is now equal to two, and uh, one of the slots uh, which should be executed on the line two is uh, is not yet accomplished. So uh, user space will uh, will will see the garbage there. So that's that's obviously not uh, not nice, and that ha has to be f has to be fixed. Um, the the approach is uh, how can we uh, be sure that um, how how can we be sure that. Um, the, the 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 CPUs which enter simultaneously um, advance the tail uh, in 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 in, sequ in sequentially. Uh, the the obvious solution is just uh, the last one uh, should advances the tail, and the last one is uh, can be accounted using the reference counter. So uh, we have uh, the some counter which is the, just the reference, and if we have observed that that we are uh, the last one, so the reference is one, so we, we, we are uh, uh, the, the guy who sh should close the door uh, and uh, we should uh, remove the garbage or in our case just uh, advance, advance the tail. That's, that's uh, the first thing, so we, we need the reference uh, counter. Uh, another thing is uh, that uh, along with the reference counter we need, uh, we need to know uh, how on how much tail should be advanced because the last one CPU doesn't know about how many um, other CPUs uh, were bef before, before and uh, with, with uh, how many we should raise. And in that case, uh, we need another counter. We need the counter which accounts uh, the, the number of, uh, of, 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 let's say, how many we should uh, advance, the, the of, of how much we, we should advance the tail. So uh, that's advanced counter, let's, let's call it like that. And we need the three third counter, which uh, simply mm, points. So, because we have the ring buffer, and we need to know uh, wh where uh, wh what is the next slot. Uh, so, for that needs, we need some counter, which is always monotonically increases. Uh, so, uh, which can overflow. So that's that's the requirement. And. Uh, uh, but it, it always increases and um, n never never decreases. Mm. So we need three counters, and just uh, for to the the requirement is that those three counters uh, have to be uh, incremented uh, atomically. Just we need take the the, the biggest possible 64 bits uh, value, just split on three parts, and uh, we have uh, this. Uh, uh, these three counters. So here, for example, uh, that's the the, the structure. Uh, I just put it uh, just an example. Uh, it, it is represented in big engine, uh, and uh, we see that monotonic is 32 bits, and it is uh, located on the left. So the the, the most significant part because uh, the, this monotonic can can overflow, and uh, when it overflows, it uh, should not corrupt other values. That's that's important thing. And other two, uh, two, two uh, guys that uh, advance and refs, wi which uh, have two, uh, so each one has the uh, 16 bits. Um, so th that's, that's, th that's the idea, uh, how to uh, keep uh, three counters, uh, increase them uh, atomically, and uh, have, um, 
do, do not have uh, races. So, and that's uh, the, 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 the final, um, uh, the code which uh, does the, in the lockless insertion. So, of course, the, um, it's, it's not nice, it's complicated, uh, but at, l at least it uh, solves the, the, the major problem. So, we can now insert everything locklessly. So, let's, let's go through, I, I think I will go be, be fast. So, the, the, the first line is, uh, as, as I told, we need just, uh, we, need, we, we have this shadow counter, which is for this, uh, 64 bits, and we just uh, increase it. Uh, so, we uh, simultaneously increase uh, those three counters. A monotonic advance and the reference, and then we uh, wh what we do is uh, simply we sh need to extract. So on the on the second line we just extract uh, the the point uh, the the index of uh, of uh, the so basically we extract the monotonic counter which points to 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 the ring buffer, and uh, with with this index we store the value. So that's uh, we. We'll in 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 the uh, in user space will observe uh, this this value after uh, we I, I, um, we advance the tail but the advancing the tail that's the whole loop uh, which we do which we start on uh, the fourth line so now we have to decide we we need to split the code on two parts we need to decide are we the last uh, or we need uh, or there are some other guys which uh, will do mm, the advancing of the tail so if we are the last so that's the fifth line so we need mm, we, we see that the counter uh, is, uh, so the, the, the part uh, of this big counter, uh, the, the reference part has uh, the value one, so we are the last. Okay, uh, we are the last, th then we have to commit everything. Uh, then we extract the advance, and then we go to, to the, uh, number, n the line number 10, just simply to atomically exchange uh, the counter and um, commit, uh, commit uh, the, sh the shadow counter. And uh, if, we, if we are not the last, then we simply uh, decrease the reference and uh, again uh, go to, 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 the, to, to the line number 10 and simply uh, do the compare exchange. So let's say we, we finish with that. We uh, uh, pass the point, uh, the, this 10th line, so we are uh, committed uh, the shadow counter. Then we uh, have the advance. If we have the advance, then uh, we were the last. We need now uh, to advance the tail. So we are sure now that uh, everything, all the job mm, behind us, all the CPUs which, uh, which uh, came before, uh, they uh, fully completed uh, their job and uh, they inserted uh, the, uh, the new items inside uh, the ring buffer and everything, everything is fine. So we just uh, do uh, the mm, atomic uh, add operation and th that's it, we are done. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe it's just a theoretical concern, but could it possibly happen with, say, a lot of CPUs that you would actually never go down with the ref count to one or zero? Um, there will be uh, always, say, two or three writers waiting. Uh, no, because uh, we, we have uh, obviously limited amount of, of fi file uh, descriptors. So let's say we have 10,000. Uh, then, uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, less number of CPUs. And uh, so you are talking about the life lock. And a life lock uh, can happen because uh, once we inserted one, uh, the, uh, once the, the first file descriptor, let's say, uh, and, um, saves uh, the... Um, some item to the uh, to the ring buffer. It will never return till uh, the user space uh, uh, harvests the event. So we are always limited to the number of CPUs and to number of file descriptors. Ah, yeah, yeah. So if you have an error write for the set descriptor, you don't have to uh, to to to, to go to to insert. That's that's what I uh, talked ah. before. That so yeah. that's we we never overflow the the ring buffer. So that's th here we are safe. Of course, uh, if many events and we have many CPUs and uh, so accidentally uh, they are uh, really firing very very fast, uh, then uh, we we will always uh, like like a chain. We always um, postpone the advancing of the tail. But uh, okay, so wh what's uh, what's the problem? So it's 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 not a big deal. Uh, sooner or later we will do that. So that's that that should be done. Just one comment to uh, your the division of the 64-bit value that uh, you use 16 bits for a CPU count, that's fine, but uh, uh, the other two counters, I think they should be sized the same because uh, this limits you to some 64,000 
Well, 64K uh, file descriptors only. Yes, that's that's and fine. Uh, that's uh, well, that's not fine because uh, you can have EPO with hundred thousand file descriptors. And what then? Um. So I would just put it to twenty twenty bits, and then uh, that should be fine because one million that's unlikely, possible but unlikely. Uh, but 64K is simply too little for uh, these th systems. The, the first thing which uh, I, uh, that's the memory, uh, which you also have, have to think because I, I do not want to allocate a lot of memory and we are talking, if we are talking about the, the huge number of, of file descriptors which, which you mentioned. Yes, we are talking about machines with 48 terabytes of memory, so uh, <laughs> yes, we have the memory for that and uh, Then, then, then yes, then, then I have to tune it and uh, allocate more bits, so that's, that's not a problem, so that's, uh, yes, the, thank you. Uh, we, 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 it's, it's, we, can d we can reduce the monotonic counter, for example, and take uh, some bits. I just wanted to split it equally, so I like this 16, 16, 32. That's, that's, but thanks for the comment. Um, so uh, uh, what is the rest? Uh, the rest is uh, just prepare the um, user, space, uh, user space headers, uh, introduce the, the new system call, uh, which is, uh, accepts uh, the flags, uh, for because we need to, to because n now there is no any support for, for such kind of things so we need to tell to the kernel hey I, I'm using the uh, epol file descriptor and uh, now I want to pull it from the user space uh, then we have uh, to uh, map um, to memory regions uh, and to expose the, to the to the user space and for that uh, we need to use the uh, vmalloc uh, user so for example I, I like it to, to use because uh, this vmalloc user uh, it um, solves the problem of uh, decash aliases, uh, which uh, can be, uh, frankly speaking, I never, I never uh, worked with, with such hardware which uh, has this um, uh, virtual uh, indexed and virtual uh, tax uh, cache lines, but uh, th this, this can happen. Um, and what, what, that, what, what else? Uh, we have inside EPOL, we have EP insert and EP modify, EP remove. Those are uh, simply th uh, three functions which uh, in s in register file descriptor when we add it, uh, remove it, and uh, modify. So that's the just the simple homework. Uh, it's uh, even not interesting to mention. And uh, to be polite and nice, uh, you just provide the some self test uh, for, for testing new functionality. So what are the limitations? Uh, limitations, uh, the first one is uh, we have all these limited files, uh, limited f number of file descriptors. Uh, so we need to tell uh, the kernel. So now EPOL, uh, so you, you can just use it and L, uh, add uh, new file descriptors all the time. But uh, here we, we need to tell um, that I'm going to use, let's say, 10,000, 20,000, so some fixed number, because kernel ha has to uh, create uh, the memory for you and then map it uh, to, uh, to then, then you can map it to, to your user space, uh, 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 address, address space. Uh, then, that, but that's not, not, not actually a problem, because uh, first you can allocate a smaller number, then uh, when you reach some this limit, then you can always recreate your EPOL, and then, so that's, that's of course the slow path. Uh, what else? Um, ah, uh, the, the, the also the important limitation is that uh, this feature is uh, always the, the edge trigger behavior, behavior mode. So you, if, if you have a loop of inside your application and it is uh, written such way that it always level triggered and that's basically the default. Nobody cares about this edge triggered, uh, maybe some applications. Then you have to rewrite it. So that's uh, some work has to be done. So it's uh, unfortunately it's impossible just take any application and switch it to to to, uh, to this user space. So uh, some How work has to be done. How does the user space actually get uh, the buffers? Because you've shown one system call with uh, size and flags, but how do you get the addresses of the buffers back to user space? Uh, to the application, or how does the application give the addresses to the EPOL? So you you uh, uh, you mean the memory? H how yes, you? Yes, because you need a shared buffer. So how? how yes, the, the the buffers are created. Uh, they are located uh, in inside inside the kernel. And then you do the map si system call uh, for the EPOL file descriptor. Ah, okay. Then so that's uh, I just uh, mentioned it uh, in few words. Um, and um, what's what's uh, what's next is that uh, EPOL wake up. That's the flag uh, which keeps the device awake. And of course, from user space, we are not able to talk to the power management. So that's uh, that's not supported. And what is not uh, supported is EPOL exclusive flag, which uh, wakes up all file descript. Uh, mm, which uh, so it, it wakes uh, only only the, the first guy which it, it finds. So. 
Uh, it can be done, but uh, frankly speaking, I, I tried and I did not like the code, so that's uh, uh, which I uh, just saying, okay, it's, it's not supported. Um, so the measurements, uh, I, I, I have five minutes left and I think uh, I will be fast. So uh, what I, I, I did to, uh, to measure that uh, the stuff, I, I modify the leap event just to, to be close to real uh, applications and there is the bench, HTTP benchmark. So uh, two applications, the server and client side uh, and the client side simply sends uh, the HTTP request to this uh, small server. And uh, I got 15%, uh, so that's only one threaded, so we are not talking about uh, any of these uh, s s scenarios when you have millions of uh, threads. So only one thread on client and, when and only one thread uh, server, so I have 15% uh, gain on, on, on this uh, simple HTTP test. But that was on, on, my, on my CPU. If I, <laughs> I go to some other machine, uh, so I, I tried it on another, uh, and I did, not, uh, I did not get anything because, so uh, according to the debugging, so I, I tried to debug that stuff. Uh, so the, the numbers uh, are almost equal with the normal ePoll and user, uh, polling from user space. And what I see there, that, uh, that the, the machine is uh, rather slow. So if you do the, for example, sending, uh, from lo local sockets, uh, I, I reach the point where I need to decide, do I need to wait, or I have something to harvest from, uh, from, from memory. I do not have any events. So the machine is just slow to provide me some events, and I need to wait, so I don't have any uh, good... Uh, mm. So it's, it doesn't work all, always on all, all the machines, all the CPUs. And the, the real uh, tests uh, uh, are are required. Uh, that was Linus uh, to, to told that uh, to, uh, to, to uh, land these patches, uh, some real examples. So for example, Ginks would be a nice solution, uh, or QMU, because those are, uh, they heavily use the, uh, the loop, uh, the event loop. So those modifications would be nice, and I, I plan to do that. And those are, um, so if you're interested, uh, that's the fifth attempt to land it uh, upstream, then there's some kernel branch, then testing tool, and uh, some lib event modifications, which I, I sent to, to the lib event maintainer just to tell, hey, uh, are you interested in that or not? He told, yes, why not? And so that's not uh, a big deal for him to, to modify this stuff. Yes, so uh, I'm, I'm done. Any questions? What is the interaction? It's uh, you don't want to hot poll all the time, so uh, uh, the application polls for file descriptor from uh, user space, but then uh, at certain time it don't get anything new, and uh, you want uh, to sleep. Yeah. So would you just uh, normally uh, poll for epoll file descriptor? I, I I will call uh, epoll wait. So it's it's not forbidden. You you just go ep to mm -hmm. epoll wait, and if epoll wait observes uh, that uh, mm, this you you have something in the ring buffer, it returns you an error special error which tells you, okay, go now to the okay. ring buffer and harvest the events. And uh, if uh, nothing is there, then you simply sleep like a uh, normal, <laughs> normal person. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's it. Yeah, no, no, no questions then. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.